Barshins is brought to you by our awesome patrons. Thanks for supporting the channel. Barshins! Hello, everybody. Welcome to Barshins. Hello, Stuart. Hello, Barry. How are you doing? I'm jolly. Today. I'm pleased <laughs> to hear it. Jolly West Country chat today. How are you? Aren't we all? No, we're not. It's just you. Sorry, Barry. Yeah. I was taking well, away your uh, unique selling point. You're a, a jolly East Country chap. Does they call it the East Country? Um, no, just sort of the East or East ah. Anglia or just not referred to at all and forgotten it exists normally. <laughs> Speaking of geographical locations, <laughs> <laughs> we have another point of the UK here. This is Julie McDowell. Hello, Julie. Hi, Hello, everyone. Julie. She's an actual Scot. Yeah, Smen. a Scot who's Lady. Appalled, <laughs> appalled at the prices of everything in London in that stereotypical way. Yes. <laughs> to be fair, I'd be worried about anyone who wasn't. In yeah. the prices of everything these days. You have days. to pay to go to the toilet. It's like crazy. I've you have to for pay free. for wine. You have to pay for food. It's, yeah, yeah. it's, it's, it's not ridiculous. It's it. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, welcome, Julie. Thank you. You are from Glasgow. Mm -hmm. Could you give a little biography of who you are? Um, I am a writer, although I still feel embarrassed about saying that, but um, I right i get paid for it so therefore i must be in the club um i started off doing internet dating and then my experiences were so horrific that i began writing about it for a local newspaper oh. uh, i then became a tv critic because when i met someone the blog had to end and then i've transformed from tv critic to book critic into nuclear war obsessive so now i spend my mm. life that's quite a common route yeah, it's yeah, obvious. It yeah, nuclear yeah, yeah, yeah. internet dating to nuclear war are the same because they both involve absolute horror <laughs> so it seemed natural so yeah. now i'm a nuclear journalist researching them how we prepared for nuclear war and i've also got a special superpower which is that i can taste people's names you can taste people's names so i think we should come on to that there's so much uh, there that's, very that's looking so forward good. to this so, podcast let, right we'll do the, we're gonna get a shark call out of the way because i just want to hear about <laughs> yeah. the interesting stuff um, right let's play the theme please do <laughs> Shuttle. Shuttle from the Metro. You know it's going to be quality. Mm. You know it's Tongue going to be quality when there. it Ooh. comes from the Metro. <laughs> that, that's their jingle now. Yeah. <laughs> Free. They're going to be phoning up. Barry, we need a recording yeah, yeah. of this. That voice is like velvet. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Missing goat found 25 miles away catching tram to Manchester. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Lucy Rogers, who is on here, she literally just retweeted that before we started. Really? Yeah. I'm a little, I amazing. knew she was psychic. <laughs> Wake Dino. Wait, yes. oh, you haven't seen oh, that? Oh, it was on Friday. I don't know if you saw it, where she had a hashtag, and I think the dinosaur was going up and down all night. Uh, <laughs> what a day it was. <laughs> that, <that's>... Barry. Anyway, <clears throat> Bell, a pygmy goat, had uh, been reported missing earlier that not week. Not a euthanism, sorry. <laughs> euthanasia, uh, I was saying. It was not euthanasia. <laughs> she was discovered at a tram station waiting behind the yellow line with other commuters. Then there's actually a photo of a very small goat doing exactly that. What wow. an obedient goat. Yeah, that's astonishing. Is it on its own? Yeah. It looked, Did it have a ticket? There's, there's, <laughs> yeah. We're about to find yeah. out. I, think. I hope an, they threw it yeah. out. Yeah. Uh, that is an off-peak ticket. Yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think you're no, fine. I know don't, this don't is off-peak. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, that was good. <laughs> oh, Very good. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, ten points for that one. <laughs> My favourite thing about this photo is there's a bloke just standing near the goat and he's doing the whole... I'm just standing here. This is not my goat to look at. Oh, he's got him on a lead. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's nothing to do with me. It just happens to be a goat. Dear me. So that's not the goat. That's just a goat they've planted for that photo. No, no. This is the goat, ah, apparently. Right. Yeah, yeah. So that's a live capture oh, by you. Do, do you know what the caption is? Do goat you puns. have a ticket, ma'am? Oh. <laughs> mm. <sighs> it's not clear how she came to be there or if we've underestimated goats this whole time. Probably not the latter. <laughs> We've underestimated goats this whole time. <laughs> no, they will destroy us. Yeah, it's like a Scooby Doo. <laughs> <laughs> Take the goat's mask off. It's a slightly bigger goat. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> That's a unicorn. Damn it. Fellow passengers were mostly just ignoring the goats and using their phones. 
Oh no, jo- Julie Most Swindle. Do that, yeah. <laughs> Julie Swindle. Swindle's a bad Ooh, name, isn't it? Name. Not trusted. Julie her. Swindle. Julie Swindle, forty-nine, said Belle went missing from her farm in Greenfield, Saddleworth, on Monday. I definitely think she was stolen, as she turned up twenty-five miles away. There's no way she could have got that far on her own. Julie said. <laughs> that's a, at twenty-five miles. That's a hell of a journey. It's like a pilgrimage. Animal. There's a, there's a really great photo of Julie holding up the goat, but in the window there's a really sad looking dog that's been locked outside while the photo Aww. shoot is going on. Oh, wow. yeah. like, that yes. Well, what's going what, on? My pedigree chum. Who's that man? Animal rescuer Louise Fields from the Dogs for Rescue in Salford went to the tram stop in Sale, Greater Manchester, after receiving a call from a member of the public yesterday. Hello, is that dog rescue? Yes, I've got a goat. (laughs) (sighs) Louise said, It was so funny the way the commuters were just on their phones. How could they resist having snuggles with a goat who was right there? (laughs) Because you don't know the goat. They might try and attack you. I don't know what snuggles means to everyone else, but I'm proper like, you know. Dr. Snuggle, friend of the animal world. Should the gorilla's anything with horns? You just don't snuggle? Yeah. This this could have been Baphomet, the dark goat of Mendes. Goats can be quite vicious because they like headbutt each other, don't they? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they can really go for it. And according to YouTube, all they do is scream and scream and sit up. Oh, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) 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 It just (laughs) gets up a tree 10 seconds earlier. (laughs) Hello, is that the dog catcher? (laughs) The owner came to collect her. She thought she would have been in the pot. Well, she thought somebody would have... What? <laughs> Cooked she, it. Oh, she, goat curry. Nice. Yeah, so she thought somebody stole the goat to eat the goat? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. That's very odd, isn't it? Bell had been presumed stolen as a gate to the farm was open and the electric wires had been taken down. Ooh. Ah, uh, but it's a happy story. She has now been reunited with her brother, Jingle. <laughs> In a curry house. Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> and there's some ads on here for devices to fix bunions. So that's oh, how nice. Yeah, how do you fix a bunion, Stuart? Uh, uh, well, I've often wondered that whilst I've been looking at elderly people's bunions. <laughs> <laughs> I Thanks often back. Google image search that. Yeah. Oh god, this got. Like, I don't, why is it bunion actually? Do you know? I know why this has come up because I was crazy, isn't it? Do you no, it's. I don't prepare for this. But <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> this is where it goes. How would we deal with bunions in a post-nuclear scenario? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what do bunions taste like? <laughs> they, need a, they need their own bunker. That's what they need. <laughs> That's come up because I was looking on Wish.com for ran, you put random words in or, and <laughs> video series on doing and seeing what it comes up with. No, and it frequently comes up with things like that, no matter right. what word you put. And I always skip it because it's rubbish for. Video, I actually so. don't know what a bunion is. Is it like a way you've been rubbing? Yeah, it's like where the big toe has like come further into the oh uh, nice. The toes and there's My like mum a... had a bunion actually. Didn't talk We're about that when she was on, did we? No, <laughs> this is gore. Let's talk about your bunion, mum. <laughs> wow, oh, there dear. we go. What was the name of the lady who owned the goat? There, then uh, that was Julie Swindle. Okay, amazing. Uh, so, can we ask straight off? <laughs> oh. Hello. I'm sorry, I just saw what's trending now on the Metro. And number one is, wait for it, melodramatic dog fakes own death in walk protests. (laughs) (laughs) Walk protests? Yeah. Oh, is that when he just, yeah, I'm not going out for a walk. Yeah. Yeah. Are we going double shotted? No, yeah. no. Th- this one's that one's being stored for next time. We'll that keep one. That one. Look forward to yeah. that one, folks. <laughs> okay. Let's uh Oh my god. So actually we had a name in that short article. Was it was it Julie as well? What was the last it name? Was. Julie Swindle. Julie, Julie Swindle. What is that? Well sadly, my name is Julie and it's a horrible name. My name is a big watery eyeball. A watery oh, eyeball. Yeah, I feel like I've got an attack of hay fever. And what, Julie is a watery eyeball? Yeah, that's what, that's what it tastes like or feels like to me. Yeah. A horrible big watery eyeball. Wow. So oh, I hate my name. So like conjunctivitis or something. Yeah, the film of... works, oh. the goo, the crusts, oh. everything. Oh. It's not a nice name. What about I Swindle? Mama. Swindle, Swindle. Swindle is, it's, um, like, it's like a bit of machinery that has to be cranked. Sometimes it's a, it's a sensation rather than a taste. Yeah. So it's like cranking an old oily bit of machinery. Wow, with an Ooh. eyeball. So Julie's with swindled. Water, yeah. She's got a oh, fantastic oh, name. I've got name. conjunctivitis, so I'm still at work at the factory. Yeah. <laughs> That's wow. terrible. It must be health and safety implications. It's yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. giving it to everybody else. So can you explain your superpower? How does it... Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, what's it called? Synesthesia. Synesthesia. And it's genuine. Uh, I went viral with it a few weeks ago. And of course, because it's Twitter, there were lots of aggressive men saying, mm. you're making this up. Yeah, it's a about, recognized sorry about that, condition. Barry had a lot to drink. His sock puppet accounts got out of hand. It is a recognised condition. It's mm. genetic. It tends to run in the family. My mum has it. Uh, my sister has an even weirder version than me because she can taste uh, numbers and letters but she can also assign personalities to them. To a, a number? To a number or a letter. So when we were uh, we, she would say things like, Gran, why does seven fancy nine? And why does no one like four? And Gran wow. would just think... <laughs> so you, your house number as a child might have been really sophisticated. Yeah. Like, yeah. We're not moving there. <laughs> Our house is very angry and it tastes of conkers. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. But um, no one knows the reason. It's been researched constantly. Um, it's best described as some confusion of the senses. Mm. So the sense of me hearing a word also provokes a taste or sometimes an image. But uh, no one knows why. No one so, knows so any it's pattern more to when it. when you hear the word than if you were to say the word? Uh, yeah, it's all about hearing the word because it's all about the pronunciation. Because I've had people on Twitter say, what about Christina? And what, if it's, what about if it's spelled K-R-Y rather than C-H? It doesn't matter. It's all about the pronunciation. So like... Christina, like that, is different to Christina. <laughs> is that what you mean? Uh, Movie producers, get in touch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, no, um, made up accents don't alter it, Barry. Uh, uh, that, was, that was my problem with West Country. Uh, I don't think I have a new favourite guest. Yeah. <laughs> um, hi, 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 Christina. <laughs> no, it's not working, is it? No. Je Jenny. Peas and, peas and carrots, Jenny, Forrest Gump. No. Jen no, oh, Jenny's good. Jenny's my sister's name. Jenny is a safety pin, which has been dipped in vinegar. Ooh, Ooh that's, that's safety, specific, but also a nasty it? weapon. Yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of vinegar, one of my favourite vinegar themed names is Donald. Donald is a little rubber duck who's been sliced in two and then dipped in vinegar. Oh. And of course, peasants on Twitter say, how do you know what that tastes like? Mm. But it's what I imagine a little rubber duck dipped in vinegar yeah. would taste like. Do you find yourself then imagining what it would taste like? Oh yeah, my mind's full of rubber ducks bobbing around. <laughs> <laughs> Too many Donalds around. Yes, I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So you said there's a few variations of this then, or like? Uh, yes. Some mine uh, apparently is the most rare. The most common, I think, is seeing colours when you hear words. Ah. Uh, but mine is um, tastes uh, sometimes images. So if I so, if someone I say to someone I, I want an orange, they see an orange. Uh, well, then they, I might say to someone else, I want an orange, and they see black or something. Is that... It could be, uh -huh. but uh, orange is quite cause quite um, leading, I suppose. Specific, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. But if you said maybe like table, they would maybe see orange, you know. Yeah. It can be any word. The classic one people say is if um, people can like see colours when they hear music, and that yeah, kind of thing, that's, that's a very common one. one. Yeah. The neurological crossover, as you say, is the sort of theory yeah. of it, isn't it? And but there is a link between it and great creative genius, but I'm, I'm not saying anything about that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But the, yeah. I think you'll find, if you read my columns, the evidence is there. Yeah. <laughs> so my uh, wife, we have the discussion sometimes where you say that, and this is, I think, more common, is where you say one colour, like, oh, that's light blue, and she'll know that's green. Do you ever get that? Yeah, yeah, that's that's more just uh, that's, that's everybody. <laughs> yeah, much, it yeah. was green, Barry. You a need a light classic test. one is Blanca from Street Fighter 2. Is he yellow or green? Let me find out for you. I will Google search it. Oh, but no, but he's going to get the wrong version of the game and ruin everything, isn't it? Blanca. Oh, that's Blanche Hazelnuts. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That, that was very on brand. I enjoyed that, Barry. Blanca, that, was, that was excellent. Uh, My favourite Street Fighter character. Blanca. <laughs> Blanca's an American music musician. Oh, no. Is it with a K? Yes. Oh, yeah. Blimey. Sorry about this. I probably should have spelled it on the ground. It's not a real name. <laughs> oh, he's he's green. Let's have a look. He's green. Oh, yeah, that's a later one where he's all green. Ah, Let's right. see if I can find one from Street Fighter 2. Um, I don't know. Just... I'm going to regret going into this now. Ah, here we are. Oop, the bottom one. Oh, he's yellow. Ah, you see, I would say green from that. Really? Yeah, it's, it's a very yellowy it's green. It's piss yellow. Ah, so, so it's like a yellow shade. persuasion. I would say green. Green? Yeah, ah. yeah. Yeah, green, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, no, don't change your mind. Yeah. It's right no, no, to you, Barry. That's it is all green, yeah. Oh, piss yellow of a very sick man. Yeah. It's actually quite a popular shade in home base if you go in there um, on, on the swatch. <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to say that again from earlier. On the swatch, yeah. uh, piss yellow is yeah, up piss there. Yeah, piss yellow. Oh, baby's diarrhoea brown. That yeah, yeah. Nice. yeah. Yeah, lovely, yeah. <laughs> so I've got this biography here. Can I read it, a whole thing out? Freelance writer. Prior to that, I worked in 22 call, 22 call centres. Yep. At once? 
uh, <laughs> one after oh, the other. Just smashing all these phones. Yeah. Like, yeah. okay. I worked in 22 call centres, one after the other, and if you could draw a chart of my mental health, it would be declining with each call centre. Right, that's like every call centre I've yeah. ever worked oh, no. in, certainly, yeah. So were they all very similar ones, or was um, there like a, quite a lot of them near where you live or something? Uh, they were all in Glasgow. Glasgow's sadly full of call centres. Um, I worked in one that had some prestige. It was Employment Law Helpline. Uh, and it was still the same. Even though you were doing high-level stuff, it was still a case of, can I put my hand up to go to the toilet? Please? Oh, I had that. Oh, that yeah. Which is ridiculous. Very robotic sort of thing. Uh, absolutely yeah. ridiculous. And you'd be timed going to the toilet. Right. Wow. Absolutely Ta- Like a time trial, like Mario Kart or something. You have a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday you did, you did 20 seconds. beat your high score. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh wow 22 yeah. though that's and it was unfair because the men obviously had better scores than the women yeah women, when they go to the toilet they have to also fix their hair that's right mm-hmm. yeah totally unfair they didn't take that into account at all the they fact didn't that... they don't care about lipstick no. and hair. she'd give you a handicap in like at least 15 seconds people so 20, that's, I don't think I've had 22 jobs 22 that's yeah, incredible that's because I'm, I had a history degree so naturally when you graduate with a history degree you go and work in call centres. That's just the way it is. Oh, is it right? Yeah. 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 yeah, it's either yeah. McDonald's or call centres. Did you do like, was there a best way that you quit them? Was there, was there like a, I'm um, going out, Z snap? Oh, yeah. There were some I just emailed saying I'm not coming back. That yes. would normally be when my student loan was due, like the night before, but yes. That's I'm right, yeah. Tomorrow. <laughs> oh, awesome. Okay. Um, being utterly miserable, it developed into, oh, it developed into depression. You don't mind us uh, it made, No, it made me really ill, like an right. actual nervous breakdown. And oh, that's, right. Uh, um, that was six years ago. I still have kind of effects from it. It's almost like a hangover. I'm okay. over it, but I still have trouble, for example, getting on the tube today. I had to go through Euston, very, very busy, and I could feel a bit of panic. Oh, right. So um, that's because I was never, ever claustrophobic at all before then, and, but this mental breakdown just clobbered me with this strange uh, hysteria whenever I'm in an enclosed space, right. which I still can't shake. So here you are in an enclosed space with me yeah, and Stuart. I just want to get out of here now. <laughs> Literally a wall behind us. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, we're quite we're nice. And th- these are curtains, so they move and stuff. So yeah, I, mean, I can't imagine what that would feel like. So, it's a strange yeah. thing, yeah. So it's quite brave of you to come down from Scotland. Is that on the train? Uh, on the sleeper. I like the sleeper because I had my own wee cabin, so I could lock the door and know that no one was going to crowd in amongst ah. me. When you say wee cabin, that's a cabin that you... Small, small cabin, cabin, not one that you take yes. a no, piss not, in. Not, not, not a urine <laughs> cabin. Okay, right. yes. <laughs> they don't do them anymore in the stars. Yes, yes. <laughs> Hang on, cabin with a bed. I'm going to stay in the toilets, what? <laughs> Just on your urinal. Is there somebody <laughs> timing me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, that's, I'm glad that you made it here. And obviously, you're here for the week, so you've here got a lot of week. publicity yeah, stuff going on yeah, and stuff. Yeah, loads of nuclear research. So tomorrow, back in the archives, reading about the end of the world, which is great for someone who had severe depression. <laughs> oh. It's a brilliant way to go over it. Right, but your sister suggested you try internet dating as a solution is that right yeah i was um horribly depressed like seriously depressed not leaving the house just sitting in the house with my dressing gown on just staring at the wallpaper i knew my wallpaper exactly and um she said right it was an intervention as you call it in america and she and a friend said right get on internet dating and get out there and obviously i was horrified at the idea hmm. and also mildly insulted because you know only sad people do that oh uh, there's uh there's a so I'm not going to say that. No, no. <laughs> you know, there's a market out there. You know, get busy, board something. Sort of. they're, they're, I did try it. <laughs> I did, so um, it wasn't Tinder. It was like plenty of fish or something. Uh, oh no! Oh what? really? Plenty of fish is awful. Oh, is it really? Because it's free. Oh, so you got to pay yeah. to say. That's the only so one I, I use. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Did you find love on plenty of fish? Did you? No, I did not. Ah, no, it, I find it very difficult. But you've got loads it's, of fish. Years though. ago, it's probably been doing it. Yeah, hundreds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fishmonger was loving it. Um, I okay. went with the Guardian. I wanted a higher. Oh, a Guardian dated. Wow. Yeah. Because uh, you have to pay, f- I think it was £30 a month. So that Ooh. keeps out some wow. of the scumbags. Yeah, I think that's when you know that if someone's paying for it, then they're probably quite yeah, serious. serious. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. But um, because I wasn't looking for a husband or a boyfriend, I just wanted to be distracted from my, you know, terrible mental state. Mm. So I specifically sought out actual serious weirdos. And it wasn't hard to find them, obviously. Yeah, I mean, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome wow. to Bosch. So how do you identify a weirdo then? That's... that's um, uh, well, anyone who says in the profit, I like to watch DVDs and hang out, you think, oh, boring. Mm-hmm. I went for people who, for example, one of them was a clown, a, a literal clown. That was his job. Oh, um, my God. Another one was, um, he was an actor, amateur at dramatics, of course, but all his <laughs> all his pictures on his um, bio, or on his advert, rather, were of him in costume. And one of his costumes was, he played a cheese grater <laughs> in Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> 
I thought you meant the... musically for a second, but no, actually... Well, dress as a cheese, cheese grater, grater. That a, a silver skin-tight outfit with a cheese grater over it. Is it Alec? How are you taking notes? <laughs> <laughs> he loves cheese, that guy. <laughs> and this man was um, hitting 50, so a man, a 50-something man in a skin-tight silver outfit. But it wasn't you, ideal, you, but I thought, but I want the weirdo, so I went out with him. And I had a great time. He was brilliant, So actually. was there, like, some sort of sense of just uh, company by me? Uh, company, me? yeah, because... I don't mean to trivialise depression by saying, oh, get a boyfriend, it will cure you. Obviously not. The idea was it will get me out of the house. Mm. It will force me to put a bit of slap on, get dressed up, just be distracted. That's all it was. And mm. it turned out to be absolute great fun. But because I was looking for weirdos, obviously I had some great stories to tell. Yeah. And I wanted to be a writer, but I was too lazy or depressed to find a way into it. So I began blogging about it, and luckily um, the Herald, a newspaper up in Glasgow, took it on as a blog. So that gave me the start, which I then turned into nuclear war <laughs> somehow. <laughs> yeah. But you, you still need ah. someone to give you a start. There's, it's so hard to get a way in. Yeah. And um, so strangely, sort of... my way in was using men to cure my mental breakdown. Yeah. So the, did the clown turn up to the date dressed as a clown? Sadly not. Oh, oh. That would have been amazing. Like, I'll get the water for you in the glass, spraying it out of a flower <laughs> on his chest. And... I'm glad you pointed out that was a flower. I thought it was about my teeth, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right there. And, uh, so was there a biography that you stumbled upon that stood out or any that you're like, that's too weird? Um, One was a goat on a tram to Manchester. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, goat on a tram, fair enough, but to Manchester, yeah. that's too far for a tram. I mean, a brilliant <laughs> film, Goat on a Tram. <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson <laughs> came by button. Yeah, he's equal to snakes on a plane. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mother fudging goats on his Monday train. to Friday, tram. <laughs> yeah. Snakes, yeah. goats on a tram. <laughs> Flo Rida's uh, yeah. favourite movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, there were a thousand stories. Um, one about this clown. I was I was obsessed with them. I became really obsessed with them. Part of it must have been because I was ill at the time, you know, mentally ill. I don't, I'm not embarrassed about saying that I was. No, was. So I became totally and utterly obsessed with them. And um, my dates with him made me so nervous that prior to one of them, I drank about two bottles of wine and I was too nervous to eat. So it was two bottles of wine on an empty stomach. And when we got to the date, it was a cinema date to see the King's Speech. And when we got there, I was so drunk. This is the date that I'd been, you know, living my whole life for, dying for it. And I spent the whole day just asleep on his shoulder. Oh, so no. The day oh. I'd spent so much time looking forward to it and I slept through the whole thing. Uh, that's a wow. shame. <laughs> but then you did find true love then? Uh, yes, with a normal man. Um, <laughs> was his biography weird though? Or? Um, his, no, I, the reason I asked him already was because in one of his pictures he looked vaguely like Michael Caine. Oh, okay. But then when I met him in the flesh, I thought, oh, no, that's not Michael Caine. He looks more like the Proclaimers. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like Michael Caine then? Is that... I love Michael Caine. Oh, yes. really? So you're, you're attracted him. to Michael Caine, is that? Yeah, I yeah. sent him a Valentine's card when I was 11. Really? He wrote oh, me a lovely gosh. letter back. Oh, oh really? Yeah, oh. which I always remember, yeah. But um, yeah, this guy, David, who I'm with now, who I'm married to now. I keep forgetting I'm married. He got married last year. Yeah, um, I keep forgetting I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but um, yeah, he was normal and he... I went out with him because I reached the end of my tether. I, I thought I'm sufficiently recovered from the mental breakdown. I don't need lunatics anymore. Mm. I may as well try this normal guy because he looks a bit like Michael Caine and I love I love Get Carter, etc. So we went on a date and it was fine. And yeah. It was all right. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so I married him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're that, normal. That must you're be pretty all right, yeah. Yeah, to be fair. Yeah. Wow. That's what, incredible. What, I need to know what Michael Caine tastes like. Oh, Michael. The, the, Michael. Name, Michael. Yeah. Let me, let me <laughs> rephrase that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I need you to kill him and feed him to me. No. Yeah. Michael is salt and vinegar Ringos. Oh, that's Ooh. a good one. And Caine, Caine is a, it's like a stick being broken in two. So oh, really a flavour to of, that. It's yeah. a snap, wow. yeah. Oh, so sometimes it's an actual action then as well. Yeah, sometimes it's a sensation, yeah. Wow. But mostly taste. So Mike, Michael's a very, very strong one. It's salt and vinegar Ringo's. Mm. Whereas Christopher is cheese and onion Ringo's. Ringo's appear quite a lot in my synesthesia. <laughs> we have a, a, a chap in the room who has a very interesting name. Riyad Barmania. Riyad Barmania, okay. That's um, coconuts caught between the teeth. Mm. Like as if you've just been thrown out. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, yeah, yeah. But it's niggly coconut. It's, you need a you ah, need some, desiccated um, or yeah. Oh, okay. And you need a bit of dental floss to get it out properly. And the bar mania is that's hard. Yeah. I might just split it up into two syllables. Um, the bar 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 is um, iron brew. 
Yes. Mm. And the mania is, um, it's like rubbing sandpaper. Oh, really? Like scratchy word. Wow. You know? huh? <laughs> there you go, Riyadh. And iron brew is made by bars. Yeah. Oh, oh, that must be yeah. why. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, yeah, yeah, the link. something there, yeah. What's my name? No, no, I mean... Um, <laughs> <laughs> do, do you join me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Damn. Um, got it tattooed somewhere. Barry's down, we need help. <laughs> um, Barry Lewis, please. Barry is a lovely little uh, chocolate sweet filled with runny caramel. Oh. oh, I like this one's in Quality Street, like little barrel oh. things. Yes, yeah. yes. Oh, I really want nice. one of those now. I'll never eat one again. <laughs> <laughs> like, right, you should do. What about Lewis first? Oh. first Lewis is... Um, do you remember the sweets, the strawberry laces? I the do. Juice, that's Lewis. Oh, man. Oh, the the barrel is the chocolate barrel. Oh, that's amazing. That's a new video. That is. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a very sweet name. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. What about Stuart? Stuart, I'm sorry, your cold congealed gravy congealed. splatted onto some chips. Are the chips at least warm? The chips are warm, but... Stuart just ruins I'll take my victories where I can get them. <laughs> Congealed as well. <laughs> yeah, it's not just cold. You really need to be shoved in the microwave for a good oh. minute. Does the surname pick it up? Ashen? Um, Ashen just provokes ash. Oh, oh that makes smoky yeah. sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Wow. That's that still sounds better than that meal I cooked for my girlfriend for Valentine's. But yes. um, <laughs> yeah. still yeah. not great. Yeah. Uh, you've definitely won in the battle of the names. I there, think I have. Yeah. What was yeah. your name? I'm a watery eyeball. That's right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But the surname? Uh, McDowell is it's uh, it's an image of a, a like a, an old fashioned nurse with a little veil on her head or a little oh wow what do you call them you know oh, those wee cloaks they used yes. to wear yeah I don't remember. so that's yeah. an image rather than a taste that's incredible oh, and when this sort of all sort of picked up on uh, social media you went crazy right. Uh, oh yes. yeah, I, um, I release my. I've got a nuclear podcast called The Atomic Hobo. I release an episode every Sunday, and of course, it's about nuclear war. It's miserable. It's depressing. It's frightening. So one Sunday, I'd released an episode called What Would You Do, and it was where I'd ask my listeners to phone in with um, their what their plans were during the Cold War. If they'd heard the four minute warning, you know, would you run? Would you get drunk? Would you <laughs> shoot yourself in yeah. the head? So it was cheery stuff, and. Um, I tweeted that and I thought, for once in my life, I'm going to tweet something funny and lighthearted. And I just said, oh, by the way, I've got this condition called synesthesia. I can taste your names. Let me know what... And I thought maybe 10 people might say, here's my name, but it went completely viral. I got, <laughs> I think, 17,000 replies. Wow. Whoa. So it really went crazy. So people are really interested in it. And um, out of all those 17,000 replies, I think maybe two people said, oh, you're at it, you're making it up. Which is fair enough because you can't you can't test it. Yeah. Unless mm. you ask me something and come back 10 years later and ask me it again. I'll put that in the calendar. Hang yeah. On. Yeah. Yes. 10 years yeah. from now, we'll meet here again. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Alec Plowman. Is that, are you thinking cheese board? Uh, I'll, I'll... <laughs> <laughs> Let it go, Barry. It's not going to be a thing. Damn it. I you, no, yeah. Alec is uh, a packet of minstrels. Oh, Ooh, nice. nice. And that's yeah. not singers, is it? <clears throat> The, the, the minstrels don't know okay oh no no <laughs> <laughs> wandering minstrels don't even become in a pack yeah but it's like, like, like a bard like playing a pack their of, lutes like a pack of hyenas that's what they oh, the term is a pack of minstrels coming yeah. to besiege yeah. the castle yeah that's right they're twanging their lutes at us uh, <laughs> permission to unleash the tiger oh my gosh oh, sorry dear. and ploughman ploughman I need to split that up plough is plough 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 is vague onion taste and man is just like a wee figure of a man, but you can bite him in half. <laughs> wow. Well, that's good. A little edible that's man. man. A little <laughs> edible <laughs> oniony man. A, a, a plowman's man. You shall yes. call him onion man. I'll, I'll, I'll take cheese board over onion man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a superhero no one's ever heard of. That's, that's right. Like Kevin yeah. Feige has been in touch. You're, you're in Infinity War Part 2. <laughs> <laughs> onion man. I don't know what onion man's powers would be. Oh, but making people cry. Oh, yeah. 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 There we are, yeah. And go lovely in uh, some meat. Balls, if you lightly fry them and chop them up fine, bit of beef mince, bit of pork mince, chuck together, <laughs> herbs, refry it, lovely. <laughs> what about Ryan? Uh, Ryan's mm. also coconut. Oh, oh, it's very yeah. similar, yeah. Ryan yeah. and Brian are both coconuts. What a lovely bunch of coconuts oh. you've got behind them. <laughs> <laughs> Livermore. Oh. Uh, I need to split that up. Liver is a, a very watery, tasteless onion. It's like an onion that's been dunked in water and it's just limp and tasteless. All right, I'm in the room, so let's just see <laughs> this light, please. <laughs> and more is mashed potato, but it's not been properly mashed, so there are little lumps and oh, right. strips Ooh. of peel left you, you, in it. Wow. You did much better with the coconut, I feel. Yeah. yeah. I'll just go by Ryan, like Cher or Beyonce from now on. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Um, um, well, we've got to do everyone while we're here. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Kirsty? 
Oh, Kirsty's lovely. Kirsty is uh, the sweets, the boiled sweets called cola cubes. Yeah, oh, yes, yeah. But they've been sprinkled with lovely cocoa powder. Ooh, I quite like to try interesting. It. He's nicking all your ideas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so purely research for Barry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and wow. so then Brinkman. Brinkman. Uh, Man again is the little edible man. Oh, of course, yeah. But brink is it's like a, it's a sound brink. It's a, like pinging an empty crystal glass. Oh. So you're flicking cola cocoa powdered cola things at a, at a man glass. holding a crystal glass. <laughs> that's been quite, that's, in that's half. quite evocative wow. image. That's, a, that's another yeah. movie. <laughs> yeah, it was. A fun one, Alessio. Alessio, uh, it's the sensation. Is it rather than the taste of blowing lots of bubbles? Oh, oh, that's nice. amazing. That's nice. You, I think you may have won with that one. What's Alessio's surname? Astonishing. What's his... Bergama. Uh, that's a frozen hamburger. Oh! oh. <laughs> Bubble burger. <laughs> <laughs> you started strong. But... <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. But uh, my, I, I find it quite funny. I don't mind talking about it, but my sister, who's more you know dignified than I am, she can get quite embarrassed about it, um, especially if someone in her work asks her what their name is. She nearly died of embarrassment when a lady called Jeanette asked what her name is because Jeanette, to my sister Jennifer, is a little pair of denims that have been soaked in urine and then pinned <laughs> on a clothesline. Oh. Well, uh, no one knows dying, why. Drying piss jeans. <laughs> <laughs> That's my stage name. <laughs> please, call me by my stage name. <laughs> drying piss jeans. <laughs> Please, please. <laughs> yeah, that's not, that's not an image you want in your head either, is it? Wow. Oh, dear. So Jennifer dreads, if anyone new starts some work, is anyone called Jeanette? Oh, my God. Let <laughs> Jeanette's in. Wow. I wonder how Jeanette Cranky would have worked. Oh, Ooh, God. Oh, my goodness. That's incredible. Is there one, have you got a worst one of all time? Um, I don't like Duncan because Duncan is someone who's eaten lots of smoky bacon crisps and then they burp. Oh! Smoky bacon burp. Oh, oh, and I, oh dear, yes. Yeah, let's not go with us <clears throat> anymore or anything. That's, yeah. Yeah. Oh my okay. goodness. Um, so, yeah. when you sort of, are there different intensities to different words? Or? Uh, yeah, some names appear instantly, whereas others you have to kind of, it's almost as if you have to dig them out from the back of your mind. So some... Um, like foreign names tend to be harder. I think the familiarity makes it easy, mm. but um, a foreign name is harder, so I need to kind of dig it out from the back of my head almost, if you like. But um, the common names certainly pop up most easy. Uh, like John, for example, is really common. John is a, a leathery button on an old man's cardigan, and I'm kind of trying to chew on the button. Oh, <laughs> wow. Have you ever been in a situation where you've met someone and they've gone, hello, I'm blank and then you've been so disgusted by the taste of their name <laughs> yeah, hung up. Yeah. that's why you didn't work at the call centre that's it hung up on like 80% of all calls <laughs> you disgust me <laughs> hello I'm Brian are you freak <laughs> Missy jeans well actually someone did phone up once when I used to work for Directory Inquiries someone phoned up saying uh, there were a lot of sleazy men as there always are in every walk of life no offence to anyone yeah. in this room um, a man phoned up when I worked for Directory Inquiries and said yeah alright darling uh, be my baby and I was, oh, <laughs> sounds like Eli how dare you and put the phone down <laughs> but he was phoning for the number for BMI baby the airline and oh, I just told him no. how dare you and put the phone down on the phone <laughs> and he's just going <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, all right, darling, be my baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <clears throat> I'm just oh, trying dear. to work out how we go from this to nuclear war. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I want to ask another call yeah. centre okay, question, yeah, which I appreciate yeah. is the least interesting of the th <laughs> no, no, three no. things. But um, yeah. what was the worst call centre you were in, would you say? Um, it would have been the one that gave me the nervous breakdown because that was the worst of both worlds. It was call centre, as, as in call centre wages, call centre degradation, and that you have to have your toilet breaks timed. But we were dealing with employment law, so it was really tough work. Oh. Uh, employment law, I won't say who I worked for, but it was dishing out employment law advice to a very highly paid, respected group of professionals. And they had no idea. They were getting all this career-changing advice from a bunch of call centre people who were having nervous breakdowns. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, that's not a nice thing. I've, mm, I've never no. had a good time working in a call centre. No, I've only done it briefly awful, a couple. They really but, are. Mm. Oh, I, I'm trying to think of my worst. Probably adult social services answering the phones for that, just because it was just by its nature. It, it, it was a much nicer environment, but by its nature, it's a very depressing mm. thing a lot of people call up who you mm. know, really aren't with it anymore. And it's just very sad. Yeah. A lot of them haven't got any families. And, oh. Right. Oh. 
That's the only job I've ever started where they said, we're glad you started because the previous person committed suicide the other week. Oh, dear. And I'm like, wow. Oh, this, this yeah, job right, may okay. not be as jolly as was sold uh, yeah, to me. Yeah. You know, didn't yeah. mention that at the interview. Said, no, they really no. didn't, no. So you met your now husband. How did you get married? Is there any, any, any proposal stories there? Um, I told her from the outset that I didn't want to get married. I always thought marriage was... I, I'm quite cynical, but I think that was because of the breakdown. I became all grumpy and miserable inside. Um, so I always said to him, I don't want to get married, it's a waste of time, blah, blah, blah. But then David was diagnosed with heart failure, which was a terrible, terrible shock. Because right. he's young and he's healthy and he goes mountain biking and he doesn't smoke or drink. And w when we first met, he revealed that he owned a steamer and he steams fish and vegetables. Oh, nice and in nice. Glasgow, mm. that's appalling. So what, <laughs> yeah, what, what, what kind of man are battered, you? Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a bad <laughs> So totally healthy and sensible. And then out of the blue... Um, heart failure so mm. I uh, proposed to him in his hospital bed because I knew that would make him happy and it's turned out to be all right it's not so bad being married it's just the same as before except you get a ring yeah that's <laughs> it yeah <laughs> bit of paperwork yeah. Yeah, yeah. bit more admin yeah I got that yeah awesome so um wasn't that on a trip to is it Chernobyl uh, yes, because of my nuclear work, of course, we mm. went to Chernobyl. We did a whole nuclear tour of Eastern Europe, um, Ukraine, Budapest, Prague. But in Chernobyl, David started to get very, very breathless and very tired and he couldn't keep up with us. And we thought, OK, maybe it's a bit of a chest infection. But then we met a lot of stray dogs because Chernobyl's full of stray dogs, some of whom are descendants of all the abandoned pets. When Pripyat was evacuated, you couldn't take your pets with you. Most of them were shot by Soviet soldiers, but some, of course, heads and escaped. So they have survived and produced descendants. Other uh, stray dogs have just joined in going, oh, this place looks quite cool and empty. Yeah. So stray dogs all over the place. The guide said, by all means, you know, give them a little pat, but be careful because they are stray dogs. Well, but, are they carrying something? Or? Uh, the fur does have a higher uh, level of radioactivity. <coughs> You've got radioactive dogs <laughs> running around. Literally yes. radioactive dogs. That's like the park, my local park, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's one staff here, I tell you what. Yeah. But um, the wow. lifespans are reduced because of that. Um, so the rule was, you know, don't roll about on the dirt with them. But David loves dogs. So David was going, yes, and patting them all. And they were jumping on him and he was ruffling their wee ears. Uh, and after that, he began to get quite short of breath. Oh. So I thought, I'm a very panicky person. So my mind immediately went to Chernobyl rabies. He's got Chernobyl yeah. rabies from all the, all the stray dogs. Uh, so after Chernobyl, we went on to... Prague and onto Budapest and I was dragging him into all these nuclear bunkers and the man was exhausted and really quite breathless so when we got home his dad took one look at him and said get to hospital mm. so he went to the doctor and the doctor put him straight in an ambulance and within a day they diagnosed severe heart failure wow even though he's only 44 and totally healthy it's a genetic thing we've since found out so there's nothing he could have done to, to stop it okay so it um, wasn't the dogs really it wasn't the radioactive yeah. dogs oh, we can't blame it's, the radioactive it sounds dogs sounds like a good thing he was quite a healthy man so that's probably helped yes the doctor said that you've given yourself yeah. a head start yeah yeah and um, I understand recovering from heart failure and on some medi medication, he uh, was watching some of Stuart's videos. Yes. Um, yeah. Sorry to hear that. He was in hospital. Last thing he needs. <laughs> <laughs> he was in hospital over Christmas, which is quite sad, of course. And he said, bring my iPad, please. Be he didn't ask for toothbrushes or pyjamas. It was, get me the iPad. <laughs> so he could watch um, the Grand Tour and both of you guys on YouTube. Okay. And um, when he was brought back home, he, of course, he was recovering and just watching endless marathons on YouTube and right. watching all the Ashes videos. And um, the drugs he was on were very strong. Some of them would make him gag and retch. And I was um, asleep one night and I heard this <clears> terrible, <throat> gruesome, retching sound from the living room. And I jumped out of bed in a terrible panic thinking he was choking. But it was only bloody Ashes and his <laughs> intro to his food videos. And I could have punched David oh, and I could have punched the TV for frightening me so much. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Hundred year old oh, burger yes. or something. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It probably was actually. Yeah. Oh, wow. I don't know that. So you were hmm. obviously visiting these countries because you got an obsession for this whole nuclear I mean, I don't even know what nuclear thing is, really. Oh man. I don't know what I don't know what nuclear is. Well, I've got a bomb here today. Uh, Marie, we're just yeah. going to set it off. Um, <laughs> watch. What's nuclear? Uh, blimey, that, that what's bad. a nuclear bomb? What is made of it? It was it powder in there? <laughs> <laughs> I, I yes. don't know. Bomb it's powder. Goats. Goats. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they just shriek so loud it causes mass destruction. And then they get on the bloody tram to Manchester and clean like, up. Me and my wife, Mrs. B, we sit on the sofa. Like, oh, nuclear bomb. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't know what's in it. Like, Ooh, that's bad, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I don't know what it is. Fissionable material, I suppose. That yeah. basically. 
two things they bang together very hard that causes a chain reaction, which then unleashes an incredible but, amount of energy as all the atoms. So chemical, is it? Or? Is Technically, it, it, yes, but then everything is yeah, yeah. It's so, like two. So the bomb is like a. It's thing. uranium. There are two types of nuclear yeah. bomb. One you split the atom, which unleashes energy. Where do you get the atom from? Fuse the atom. Uh, just sit pound stretch. Right? <laughs> 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 oh, they're off. Yeah. Two for one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, pound van used to do them, but you know they got a bit pricey for them. <laughs> oh, no, where do you, you get an atom? Like, yeah. I don't know. Where, where do you get an atom from? Where'd you get an atom from? Yeah. <laughs> it has to be right. quite a specific one. I don't want one. You want something like you know weapons grade plutonium, not just. Yeah, well, where did they get that from? Yeah, <laughs> it, just, it doesn't appear, does it? Like, no, it? well... Uh, oh, that's a good point. So uranium's dug up, usually, isn't it? It's my understanding. Uh, yes, you have to mine for that, yeah. yeah. Uh, right. And you don't want to be too close to it because it's very radioactive mm -hmm. and proper mm -hmm. bad news. So yeah. nuclear bombs are mined for, is that right? Uh, but the the I, material I'm, I'm that goes into them is, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then the casing is like a bomb or... Yeah, yeah, that's and exactly. And in a nutshell, if there was an are they in a nutshell, if they are in a nutshell. But once you crack it open, that's when the bomb explodes. Okay, it's a, giant a very big nutshell. Nut. <laughs> Squirrel was like, oh, God, it's a chestnut. Now we're in trouble. It's <laughs> that thing from Ice Age running around. Like, what was that? Yeah. Walnut, I don't know. That's the nuclear defence system. <laughs> it just grabs out of the air. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll have to skim over this subject roughly, but. Uh, yeah. So, how did the obsession start of um, nuclear? It started when I was three years old. Oh, and it's well, when three. I bought three, yeah. I still don't know what it is, and I'm <laughs> 25. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, if all the nuclear bombs were unleashed, if there's an all out nuclear war. Where are they? It, where are they? Yeah. Uh, in Britain, they're on submarines. Wow. In America, they are mainly in silos underground, ready to be. <laughs> this is bad stuff, guys. It's mm. very bad stuff. <laughs> <laughs> You heard it here first. <laughs> this is seriously worrying. This is bad stuff. Bar Barry's campaign for new kids. <laughs> this really won't do. This is pretty worrying. <laughs> Not going to lie. But pretty disappointed about this theory. <laughs> <laughs> Don't spray me. It's gonna sp God, wait till he finds out the sun's hot. This is going to be a nightmare. Yeah, I'm very <laughs> upset about this. <laughs> but in Barry. theory, if all the nuclear bombs are unleashed... It could, it could, in theory, end the world. But why are they Firstly, kept? kill everyone. And secondly, it could create, again, it's only a theory, a nuclear winter. Because the bombs would create so much smoke and dust as it would basically block out the sun. Wow. And so any survivors from the war would soon die of cold or mm. they would starve to death because you can't grow crops. So in theory, if mm. it was a whopping all-out nuclear war, yes, it could be the end of the world. Wow. Why do we keep them then? What's going on? Why? Well... <laughs> It's sort of mutually assured <laughs> yeah. destruction yeah. deterrent. Yeah. Barry the Lewis, war, UN the peacekeeper. The peace America didn't start a war because they knew that the Soviets would also start one. So oh, so they'll launch it towards Yeah, that. so oh. as you do it to us, Crikey. we'll do it to you, then we yeah. all die. So yeah. that's, that's what kept what it. What do they call it? Total reflex or something? Mad, Where everything, you know, basically, automatically, if they see a lot of bombs coming from one side, all the ones yeah. from the other side wow. launch. And... There's a system called the dead hand in, in Russia. Right. Where even if all the Soviet leaders have been wiped out, mm. there's a... a, a they talk about this in theory. There's a computer system which will say, hey, everyone's dead. Okay, we'll launch it then. So even if the Americans wiped out all the Soviet leaders, the dead hand system wow. could still retaliate. Mm. So really you can't win. And that's why yeah. it kept the peace. Wow. But then, of course, that's not ideal because there's the danger of an accidental launch. Yeah, I was thinking. Yes, yeah, it's yeah. very nearly happened once, I believe, yes, from the Russian side, right, wasn't it? That's yeah. right. In 1983, there was a man... There's a Netflix documentary about it called The Man oh. Who Saved the World. Mm -hmm. He was... a uh, on duty in Russia and his systems told him incoming attack from America. And of course, when that happens, it's like all systems go, launch and return. But he had just a, just an inkling. He thought this isn't right because only a few yeah. missiles had been launched. And he thought if they were doing it, they would throw everything at us. It was only a few. So he said, okay, stand down, don't take action. And then 10 minutes later, there was another onslaught. And mm. again, he thought this does not feel right. So he said, don't retaliate. No. And that's that saved the world because the policy said retaliate, retaliate, kill them all. Yeah. And because he broke the rules and didn't retaliate, the Soviets weren't very happy with him. So wow. he saved the world, and the Soviets just said, "Right, off you go. <laughs> you're wow. you're not well thought Siberia of anymore." Or so is that what happened yeah. to Chernobyl then? Because mm. I've been there on a video game on Rainbow Six. <laughs> I have. Well, it's a Rainbow Six game, I'm sure. It's first person shooter. They got a they got a Ferris wheel, haven't they? Yes, they got yeah, a Ferris. Yeah, and a swimming pool. Yeah, you play Metro twenty thirty three. Stalker there? Shadow of Pripyat. Yeah, but one get it. I don't know what game it was and oh, I was there. Was, but is that what happened? It was a nuclear accident, wasn't it? It was a nuclear yeah. nuclear power yeah. station, yes. Uh, there was a there was a test which went wrong mm. and uh, caused a terrible accident. There is um 
a thing, if that's what you can call it, underneath the reactor, all the nuclear material melted and dripped down. Oh, the elephant's foot. The, the elephant's foot, yeah. and it's solidified into a huge big chunk, and it's nicknamed the elephant's foot. Right. And apparently if you stand next to that thing for more than, I can't remember how long it is, like 30 seconds a minute, you will absorb a lethal dose of radiation. Wow. So don't lick it. Yeah. Don't lick the elephant's oh, yeah, foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Damn. Which is also true at a zoo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You wouldn't yeah. want to do yeah. that. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's in all sorts of situations, actually. Yeah. That is <laughs> no, I don't think it's ever a good... Going back to the man who saved the world, I can't actually remember, what was it that set the system off falsely? Because obviously it was a false alarm, um, as far as we know. There are always... I can't remember what it was in this case. I think. Oh, actually, I think it was sunlight reflecting off high clouds. Oh, my goodness, and that was enough to set yeah. off the... And there were stories of things like flocks of geese setting it off. So it, that's why accidental launch is so frightening because things like the sun or the clouds or geese, maybe even goats, <laughs> can set My off. Really? Goodness. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> goats. Flock of goats, flock of goats and minstrels. Did can you? Oh, yeah, the pack of minstrels. <laughs> <laughs> Did you also send a Valentine's card to Jamie Paxman? Yes, that's. Uh, when I was younger, all the girls my age liked to take that and uh, Bad Boys Inc. If anyone oh, remembers them, yes. yeah. yeah but I, I loved Jeremy Paxman, and I still do love Jeremy really? Paxman. Yeah. So when I was fourteen, fifteen, I was at home watching Newsnight, and I couldn't work out why I had no friends. But now it's becoming clear. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Have you ever sent a Valentine's card? Uh, only to Andrew Marr. <laughs> 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 oh, wow. Okay, if you haven't, you have to now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's oh, this? dear me. <laughs> so, yeah, you've got a weekly podcast called The Atomic Hobo, where I discuss all my travels to nuclear sites and also bring out the most frightening things I've found in the archives. What Ooh. is the most frightening thing you've found in these archives? Um, let me think. Nuclear archives. Judy are... McDowell. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm on news night, so I'm trying to channel my. No, he's trying to channel your inner Paxman. Yeah. I, I, You're not going to get a Valentine's yeah. card. No, no, He's got quite frizzy hair, hasn't he, Paxman? Like a small afro. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Is it? That's what Paxman means it's, it's in it's Latin. Small small afro. Afro. <laughs> it's the tight frizzies. Um, anyway, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> um, the most frightening thing I've found in nuclear archives, um, in the National Archives, I found plans to dispose of the dead after a nuclear war. Of course, after a nuclear war in the latter stages of the Cold War, when we had the thermonuclear bomb, mm. there would be millions and millions of corpses. There's no way around it. There would be millions. Mm. You can't bury millions of corpses. Um, but nonetheless, civil servants were obliged to plan. So to borrow a phrase from, I think it's Taylor Swift, planners going to plan. Mm. So they had to do it, mm. even though it was nonsensical. So the plans I've seen were, we can dig pits in local parks, you know, dig up all the lovely flowers and bury them all mm. there. Mm. Or we can put them onto barges and tow them out to sea and just tip all the bodies into oh, the sea. Oh, that's a good idea. You'd be better yeah. off setting them on fire, wouldn't you? Do, Corpus disposal experts, get in touch. Yeah, yes. The equivalent of dunking a, fish, a dead fish down a dog, that is. I quite like that. You flush it away. <laughs> so you're just kind of like taking out to sea, straight back, oh. fresh pallet. But are they radioactive? So you'd need to get rid of them? Or... Um, they would be contaminated if it's an area of high fallout, yeah. So you would need to get rid of them. Um the main reason, though, in these papers, the main reason for getting rid of them wasn't um, spread of disease. People commonly think that will spread disease. Mm -hmm. But an environmental health officer said the main threat to leaving bodies piled up is what it will do to morale. Any survivors oh, will just... Oh, yes. I'm That's really upset. <laughs> yeah. I've done such a good day that <laughs> yeah. three quarters That's of a it. million corpses. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good. Oh, oh, down salt. on it. Yeah, it's... Oh, yeah, it's like a, right off my chips. Can't get in a pound stretcher <laughs> to get more uranium. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so is there any other sort of things like what well, the planning? It that is the actual solution, is it? No, uh, yes, no, that's yeah. what civil servants were discussing in their little mm. offices because we think you know civil servants, boring, dull men, just sitting working out numbers. Mm. But in the eighties, well, throughout the whole Cold War, of course, they were discussing things like what will we do with the bodies, and um, there were things like law and order after nuclear war. Uh, of course, you can't punish people anymore by putting them in jail because after Didn't nuclear police, war, no. when you're homeless and starving, you think, jail? Yes, I get a bed and I get three meals a day. Yeah, yeah. So jail is no longer a punishment. Um, so they had to work out ways of punishing people. So it was either deprive them of food. So if you don't turn up to work, and by work we mean shoveling the mm, bodies, yeah. you will starve to death because the government are in charge of the food stockpile. So we'll leave you to starve. Or, and this is very sinister, another suggested punishment was we will subject these criminals to public disapproval. 
Now, Ooh. what does that mean to me? That sounds mm. like put you in the village square oh, and yeah. everyone, yeah. you know, Perhaps stoning stops, them or, yeah, yeah, or stops. Oh, that yeah, sounds wow. really, really medieval to yeah. me. Old school, yeah. 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 So does it say what it means? But of Not course... just start a bad hashtag about you on Twitter or something. <laughs> <laughs> My God. <laughs> wow. Because this was such a thing in um, early mid-80s culture, wasn't it? I mean, we had Terrifying. threads. Yeah. They showed us the first half of threads at primary school. Oh, that probably explains my entire tough, career. Yeah. Um, the, uh, there's the American version of it, the day after, the day after wasn't yeah. there? Uh, God, the when the Wind Blows, when the wind blows Raymond horrific, Briggs, horrific, yes, about an yeah. elderly couple animated who... Um, That's agonising. Yeah, get radiation poisoning from mm. Fallout, don't they, if mm. I remember the end? And they yes. die slowly. Yeah. yeah, oh God. There um, were plans to turn discos and nightclubs into emergency hospitals. Mm. Oh yes, I found that in the archives. Um, obviously, the hospitals that are still standing won't have near enough space yeah. for the hundreds of thousands of people who need treatment. So a lot of local councils were told, okay, go out and do a survey of buildings that could be used as hospitals. And Aberdeen Council uh, surveyed lots of nightclubs. You know, I don't think of Aberdeen as a party town. <laughs> Apparently there were full of nightclubs. Yeah, yeah. So they had um, nightclubs, ballrooms, uh, discos and hotels, which would be turned into... Uh, hospitals, anywhere with floor space where you could set up lots of stretchers. But I just keep imagining you've had your face blown off and your limbs missing in a nuclear war and you wheeled into a little Aberdeen nightclub yeah. and you're oh. lying there being treated underneath YMCA's the disco ball. playing. Oh, yeah. oh, God, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh, it's talking about ice cream vans. They, they can be used to deliver oh, yes. drugs in their refrigerated compartments. They were going to Ooh. requisition all the idea, local like ice cream vans yeah. um, because you have refrigerated compartments so they can deliver medicines um, to um, any of these nightclubs. <laughs> right, wow. What? And uh, you've seen a suicide toilet in a nuclear bunker in Prague. Oh, that's right, yes. In Prague, um, I visited a bunker which was designed for civilians. There were no bunkers for us in Britain, nothing, mm. but countries behind the Iron Curtain tended to look after the civilians a bit more, yeah. maybe because they're all comrades together, that kind of philosophy. Um, I saw one in Prague where there was a toilet block and all the doors had been taken off. They'd removed uh, the string pull for the flush so that you couldn't attach a ligature to it. And there was no mirror wow. above the, the hand basins. There was simply oh, highly polished true, metal. Yeah. And that was to deter suicides. You can't prevent suicide, of mm, course, mm. but that was the government's plan to deter suicide because we thought people are going to be, thousands of people will be crammed into this bunker. There'll be panic, there'll be hysteria, there'll be despair, especially for those whose relatives are stuck above ground. Mm. And we've got to do what we can to deter suicide and... If you're going to do that, you're going to have to lock yourself away somewhere, so perhaps in a toilet cubicle. So they had to strip the toilets of any kind of privacy so you couldn't lock yourself away Blimey. and commit suicide. Wow. I've heard of that in a few bunkers. There's one in Germany where the toilet cubicles just had like um, shower curtains across the yeah. door. So you can't lock yourself away and self-harm. It might have been yourself. a shower. <laughs> no, no, that's that's crazy. I mean, how, the, the, um, I'm just trying to think the passion that you get from this is like, you've done a podcast on it. Is it called the, the nuclear uh, hobo? The atomic hobo, yes, because yeah. I do a bit of nuclear travelling as well. Yeah, so. I don't, but you were three, so you said, when that started. Well, I was three when my obsession started, and it was because of Threads, mm. and I recommend that wow. film to everyone if you are up for it, because it, it, it's, it's, it's tough, yeah, it really it's, is tough. It's an astonishing thing. Everyone of my yeah. age who's interested in this, if you ask them what it was, they all go pale and they clutch the table and say, it was threads, it was threads. Because wow. once you've seen it, you can't go over it. They've so, just released a new version on Blu-ray. That's so right, yes. Hashtag spawn. Um, but it's, <laughs> oh, it's you mean here? But it's really expensive. Hashtag anti-spawn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but, um, yeah, it was worth it. I, so I saw it when I was three. I was too young to take in what it was, but I absorbed the feeling of absolute mm. dread and also the, the very childish feeling of, why aren't the adults fixing this? If this terrible right. thing is happening, if the world could end, you know, why why isn't my dad sorting out? Mm, mm, <laughs> um, mm. And then you realise, of course, no one can sort it out. It's above us. We can't sort it out at all. And is it because that it's like you? I'm only going to stop a few stops, sort of thing. Is that yes? Is that uh -huh. Yeah. 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 Um, well, yeah. Yeah, but with no stopping in sight, really, was it? No, yeah, no. Was, yeah. And um, left wingers, of course, want us to abolish nuclear weapons. It's not going to happen. Right. You can't. Just because they're there and. Yeah, because if is... one side gives it up, the other side goes, cha ching, oh, now okay. we're in charge. Yeah. You yeah. can't. It's not good. It's idealistic. It's, it's lovely. It's a great idea, but yeah. practically, it's not going to happen. Yeah, the mistake was starting it in the first place because yeah. once yeah. it's up and the running. out of the bottle. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly it. It's dreadful, really. From your research, how would you stop it? Or how, how, um, what would be... Yeah, sorry, you how, personally. Yeah, yeah, you've yeah, got yeah. a sharpened like, stick you, and a gun. Yeah, have you heard any amazing <laughs> ideas of how to... I was going to say, if there's a nuclear thing, like where would you hide? Can you survive one? Um, have I you got a bunker you, in your house? 
No, um, I wouldn't bother because obviously living in Glasgow, we're quite near Faz Lane where all Britain's nuclear submarines Ooh, are kept. Yes. So Glasgow oh, wow. would be gone. Firstly, because it's near Faz Lane. Secondly, because it's a, it's a big city, it's a target. Mm. So there'd be no point in me trying to run and trying to hide. And also, to be quite blunt, I wouldn't want to survive a nuclear war. Right. Because if you do survive the blast or evade the blast, mm. all you do then is... My latest podcast is called Enjoy a Slower Death. That's a quote from a book I read about it. If you do escape it, all you're doing is enjoying a slower death through mm. radiation sickness. So I wouldn't want to survive it at all. So I wouldn't bother right. running. I would probably just have some brandy and yeah. just say, come on then. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Yep. Wow. But so, um, in terms of how I would stop it, I'm not religious at all. Um, but the most sensible thing I've heard was in a religious pamphlet about the bomb. And it was, um, we have to, as a human race, evolve beyond this. We have to have the same approach to nuclear weapons that we have to, say, cannibalism or slavery. Because mm. most people now are horrified that that, mm. that used to occur. Mm. How could we have done that? It's so hideous. We have to get to the point where we think, why, how could we have had nuclear weapons? How could we have had world wars? It's 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 so barbaric. Yeah, true. Yeah. So we need to evolve past that. Changing but that's the mindset, going that. to take thousands of years. Yeah. Will we still be here by that point? Yeah. I don't know. Wow. Goodness. So that's the only solution I have. So it's very pessimistic. Yeah, no, I know. It's... We have to do a lot of evolving. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because it has kind of become more detached now than it was in the end. You know, it's more of an abstract thing. Oh, there's nuclear weapons, probably. Whereas, yeah. you know, going back to the stuff in the age of the threads, blah, 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 it was very much in the forefront, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, I remember the thing getting me was the um, protect and survive. That's horrific. Shorts, yeah. You know, particularly the one about um, what to do with relatives who have died awful, and things like yeah. that. I remember seeing that like late at night on something. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it was like been put out by the government at that stage. Mm. But were they ever actually shown publicly? They weren't shown on TV, no. but Jeremy Paxman did a panorama episode. You know, Jeremy <sighs> Paxman, my my love. Who is uh, yeah. his character. He did a panorama episode in 1981 called If the Bomb Drops. And they, it was quite a coup at the time. They managed to get clips from the Protect and Survive this films. This is probably it, yeah, yes. So I've always wondered how I saw them because I yeah. knew they weren't broadcast. I'm wow. like, how did I know about them then? Yeah, but they're, so yeah. that's on YouTube. But the whole oh. Protect and Survive videos are all on YouTube as well. Yes. They are so really? frightening. They're made mm. by the same guys who did the Charlie Says um, public information yeah. films. Well, I thought it meant Charlie bit my finger. <laughs> I'm so yeah, sorry. That's, that's, those small children, <laughs> years before they were born. Something were something <laughs> Charlie Says. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah they were quite pretty um, like, scary in a way, weren't they? Oh, the way yes. they were done. Charlie Says. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, yeah. So we had him right. put down. But they've yeah. got the same cartoonish effect, but that yeah. makes yeah. it even more frightening. Wow. Because it's almost as if the government don't trust you to behave, so they're treating you like little children. Mm -hmm. Here's how to survive the nuclear bomb. You yeah. can't survive it. Yeah. You can. The whole voiceover was like a sort of parent telling you what to yes, do. Yeah. Do this, then do that. Yeah, it's terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. We'll show you one afterwards, Barry. It'll yeah, I'll really ruin your could, life. Help me sleep well tonight in our <laughs> Airbnb. Um, yeah. the, um, after the uh, the Panorama special aired, there were a whole load of pamphlets produced based on public demand. Based oh, to on ease the, concerns. Or? Based on the the. The episodes were translated into pamphlets. Yeah, Protect and Survive pamphlets yeah. came out, and again, you can get them on eBay as well. I've got one at home, and they're, they're absolutely terrifying because wow. it's, just, you're, it's hopeless. You can't survive in Britain because Britain's so geographically quite small, but also mm. overcrowded. You know, there's a nuclear target around every corner in Britain, so you can't, if you escape the blast, you can't escape the fallout. You know, Britain would be blanketed in it. In vast countries like uh, Russia, of course, or America. In theory, you could find somewhere free of blast, free of fallout, but not in Britain. We're too, we're too small, and we're absolutely laden with targets. We couldn't have survived it. There's no way. So, so the fallout is the post blast thing of like just like ash and stuff. Yeah, it's radioactive yeah, ash. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. When the bomb, bla when the blast happens, it sucks all the debris and dust up into the atmosphere where it becomes yeah. irradiated, and then it. it just scatters it falls down. back yeah. down, but you can't predict where it will go. It oh. goes with the wind, yeah, hence yeah, yeah. when the wind blows. Okay. So you don't know where it will be. So you could run to the countryside and be perfectly safe and, oh, God, we're fine here. And then, of course, the cloud comes, comes over, over and you're you're dying. And even worse death because you're dying slowly yeah. from radiation right. sickness. God, wow. I forgot. Oh, so when you mentioned about the pamphlets just then, is that sort of some things that are already in place if it happens tomorrow? Is there like things that are going to go out on the news that are recorded, ready to go? That you know, like is there like um, oh yes, that's always an interesting media, thing, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I imagine like you're saying if they're that prepared, have they got like I don't know, like some sort of media to go on TV, radio, mm. something to broadcast almost immediately? I don't think there's a public information mm. campaign just now, and there mm. certainly aren't any sirens anymore. Well, there are two still standing in London, 
and I'm going to be a complete geek and I'm going to go and take pictures of them tomorrow. Oh, awesome. Uh, David, keep, my husband keeps saying that I'm a geek and I keep saying I'm not because I don't care about computer games. But he said, there are other ways of being a geek and one of them is taking pictures of sirens. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. So uh, the siren system is dismantled. So th there would be no siren if an attack occurred. There's a scheme being tested just now, I think, to send everyone a text. But uh, that happened in Hawaii quite recently. Yes, it and, did. Um, and you're about yeah. to die. A lot of people yeah. dis disregarded it or thought, okay, is that a hoax? So even if that happens... And, and it actually was, wasn't it, if I remember? It was a mistake or yes, something, Yes, that's right. It? Someone yeah. pressed the wrong button. So <laughs> that's not a good start, is wow. it? You know, so, um, we've got this amazing we got system through, nobody will trust. No, people wouldn't yeah. trust it. Um, but of course, oh. I assume the BBC would put something out. But then these days, everyone's watching different channels. Yeah. No yeah. one's yeah. stuck on... BBC. Yeah, they've got to put it on Netflix, basically. Subscribe for your death messages. Wow. Yeah. Um, we've got three quick fire questions that we always ask people. Okay. Uh, have you ever been in a local newspaper? I feel like you might have already answered this in a way, or was there another one? Um, I was in a, a little local newspaper. I was born in Rutherglen, a town called Rutherglen outside Glasgow. So my sister was hit once by a stray golf ball because some bad boys were playing golf in the swing park and her arm was broken Ooh. right on the funny bone by a golf ball. So she was on the front page looking all sad and miserable. Uh, it was a campaign to stop bad boys playing golf. Yeah. Um, so I was That's in the, the local paper. the sequel to Bad Boys. Yeah. <laughs> bad Boys, bad boys too. Bad Boys play golf. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Will Smith. And, yeah, yeah, he is getting on a bit, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, my poor sister Jennifer, she was told to put on her what they call compo face these days, put on her sad face. And she was oh, holding her little... Art, um, we often talk about this, how the local papers are like opposed. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Give me sad. But she yeah. had... Um, what do you call it in England? We call it a sticky, uh, the, the plaster cast. Oh, oh yes. yeah, it's okay. just plaster. I like yeah. that. It's a it's sticky. sticky? Been, uh, a sticky. Yeah. <laughs> I, Julia got my sticky on my leg because I fell over. Is that, <laughs> am I Scottish now? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly yeah, how yeah. that works, Barry. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> Yes. I was in local paper because on Jen's sticky, everyone signed it, of course, and that's I wrote on it. Before Jeremy Paxson, my love was Michael Caine. Mm. And so I wrote on it, Michael Caine is lovely by Julie. And she, she was holding her stuck up to the camera. And if you looked really closely, you could see Michael Caine is lovely. <laughs> so that was my claim to fame in the local paper. Oh, awesome. <laughs> oh, that's gold. Um, who's the most famous person you've ever met? Well, I live in Glasgow. So all the famous people, of course, come to London. So there's not really anyone famous cutting about in Glasgow. Um, mm. I was on Fred McCauley's radio show Fred once. Fred McCauley. That rings a bell. A uh, stand-up comedian. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because yeah. when I was doing my dating thing, my dating blog, I was invited on to his radio show to talk about some horror stories. So, uh, I know he's not a superstar. Sorry, Fred. But he's, uh, <laughs> he's probably the most famous person that I've met. Awesome. <laughs> Sometimes it's famous people wandering around the aisles here, so you never know. Jamie Paxman could just be outside <laughs> there. <laughs> Would you With completely Michael fangirl? Or? <laughs> 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 um, what's the most embarrassing situation you've ever been in? Oh, um, this sounds like it may be one from your um, <laughs> corn <laughs> corn or food. <laughs> 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 um, well, there was the, the date where I fell asleep, where I slept through all of that. That was horribly embarrassing. Uh, let me think what else has been... I've got so much. Probably to do with all my internet dating. Um, mm. Let me think, let me think. The guy that I fell asleep on, I was so obsessed with him, and I could tell that he was a bit of a player. And he this was, was the clown guy. The clown, yeah. yeah. So I set up a fake persona... Ah. on internet dating to catch him out yeah. and I called her the Snow Queen um, and I started emailing him as the Snow Queen and I had dates lined up with him and I'd say I would, as the Snow Queen I would email him saying so are you free this weekend and he had a date with me and he'd say no no I'm totally free so oh. while I was pretending to be the Snow Queen and catching him out I was also stricken with terrible humiliation that I'm st stooping to this lens oh, to no. catch him out yeah. but I had to catch him out so I pretended to be a snow queen to catch out a clown. <laughs> so that's quite embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> wow. My goodness. Yeah. That's a movie, Barry. That is another movie, yeah. yeah. We've got some good uh, movie plots Did to write that? down here. The snow queen versus the clown. Yeah. How does that taste? Yeah, yes. and goats on a tram or whatever it was. Just a goats on a tram. Yeah. <laughs> goats on a snow queen? Yeah. Wow. Oh, well, God. I think this has been a really interesting podcast. It has indeed. Thank and, you very um, much. I mean, you, you. you've got so much to promote. You're writing a book. Writing a book just now, yes, yeah. about how we all prepared for nuclear war. It's not about the military side. It's not, so it's not like macho the, nuclear the war. It's civil side. And it's the, about yeah. how uh, ordinary people, doctors, teachers, uh, charities, etc., prepared for nuclear war. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and I've got an agent who's taking my book around the publishers probably next week. Oh, awesome. So, fingers crossed. Yeah, we'll give that some love and it'll be on Amazon and stuff like that as well, I'd imagine. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And you've got this podcast, so obviously we probably go a bit more in depth other than the levels that I've gone to. <laughs> That's right, the Atomic Hobo uh, yeah. episode out every Sunday. Oh, brilliant. Uh, so if people want to follow you, is it best to go to your website or Twitter? Uh, or my website, yeah, juliemcdowell.com, but Twitter's best. Twitter is uh, at Julie A. McDowell. And awesome. uh, that's where all the nuclear gossip gets gets put. Yeah. Yeah, nuclear gossip, and don't send any don't send any names too much. Seventeen thousand replies. It's quite a few. Just limited to fifteen thousand. Yeah. Yeah. To be sensible. Uh, can I say who is Michael J. Fox as a food? Right. Well, Michael is salt and vinegar Ringos. Yes. Oh, yeah. We yeah, that oh, with yes. J. Team. Fox yeah. is J. Just J. 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 Is the same as Stuart. Strangely, J. Is also called cold gravy. Oh. Nice. And fo- Fox is just a fox. They are nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brilliant. There we are. I've subscribed to the podcast. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. Victory. Right, I'll do that too. Uh, thanks very much, Julie. Thank you for uh, having me. Thank, very much. Thank you. Cheers, guys. <laughs> Cheers. Bye. 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 Bye.